Hey everyone, in this video I will discuss the problems I've encountered so far in this game now that I've fully played it through. There's some good, but also some bad. However, since Square now sets up their games to be patched, it's something we can speak up about to try to get these problems fixed. I do get a lot of flack for calling out the bullshit in the ports, but there's no reason that these ports should be less functional than the same version of the game 10 years ago. The original Cage 2 FM was incredibly well made and stable, mostly without any crazy glitches and failed game mechanics. Most of us are hoping that the PS4 version can emulate that, but as of right now it has problems that prevent people that could never experience original 2FM from actually experiencing how well made it was. Anyway, let's first soften the blow by talking about the good things. There are two giant differences in 2.5 on PS4. The first I'll mention is the load times. They are almost non-existent. We could not have asked for any faster loads. Remember trying to beat Terra your first time on the PS3 version taking forever due to how long it takes to reload the fight and get back in? Well now that takes less than 10 seconds to jump back into the fight. The people with no life will forever claim that load times are fine, but those of us who don't want to stare at black screens for hours are very happy about this. However, I will mention that I'm not convinced Square actually did anything to the load times. I believe it's a benefit of the PS4. Reason being that people who have hacked the PS3 port using an ISO noticed that the load times were obviously faster, just not insanely fast. Now combine PS4's forced data install with the PS4 just outright being a much stronger console, and we have incredibly faster loads. So while this is a huge improvement to this port, I do not believe Square gets credit for it, I believe Sony does. Next improvement is of course 60fps. If you've played DDD in 60fps already, you can imagine how great it also looks in 1.5 and 2.5 to have 60fps, and indeed it is stunning to see the smooth speeds in which the game works now. It even comes with the benefit of allowing you to react and input easier in fights. However, we always knew from emulator hacks that increasing the FPS in KH2 caused huge physics problems, and while the double gravity physics problem is at least not present, there are still numerous side effects to the physics being off. Quite a bit of the physics problems aren't likely to even be noticed by casual play, although some will likely stick out or get in the way of normal gameplay. For example, Data Vexen's data bar now fills up incredibly fast, far faster than intended, allowing him to summon Antisora at the start of the fight before you even get a chance to move. This is not at all how the fight was designed, and upping the game to 60 FPS broke this fight's design. Does this make the fight unwinnable? Of course not, speedrunning even already found a small workaround to skip his desperation move. But casual play will be a nightmare with this fight, because you will have a fully maxed out Antisora on the field too fast, which is going to make critical mode fights against this guy much more difficult for people who aren't hardcore players. Some people moronically jump on the oh good, I like a harder challenge boat, but having a harder challenge from a game mechanic failing is not actual challenge. You know what's also hard? If they made it so you randomly die every time you try to do a combo. But that's not the right reason for it to be hard. You want a challenge? That's what Critical Mode and Level 1 Critical Mode are for, within the mostly well-designed fights the game has to offer. I've already beat Vexen on Level 1 and on Level 99 Critical Mode, and let me tell you that with the level of knowledge of the game I have and with my experience, you guys are not going to have a good time if this goes unfixed. It went from a pretty well thought out challenge to an unfun disaster of a fight. The second Timeless River Windows RC also now does not work half the time, which results in you likely landing into an attack instead of how it's supposed to work. These are just a couple of examples of physics problems that should not exist, but are because Square slapped 60fps into this game without appearing to playtest it. I have a paste bit in the description of all the issues I've run into myself or heard from other players. Also, a bunch of things in this game are actually still 30fps, which looks very out of place compared to the 60fps around it. By the way, sound effects are still screwed up in this port as well. If you don't know what I mean, many sound effects and voice clips failed to play that original KH2 had no problem accomplishing. It makes no sense to me personally, and while it's not really a serious problem, it's a bit sad that voice clips from bosses that are in the game's code cannot play properly, never to be heard again in these ports. So I already mentioned two good things, with one sort of countering itself, and one bad thing by itself as well. But what else is wrong then? For starters, they still have not fixed Final Xemnas. His reaction command still randomly does not show up, leading you to get hit, comboed, or even die on higher difficulties. And before some moron tries to claim you have to time it now, no, that is not true. It legit does not even show up regardless of if you mash or time it, so people claiming that have no idea what they're talking about. 
This glitch actually always has existed in KH2, but it was incredibly uncommon to happen on PS2. But ever since the PS3 port, you have a very slim chance of getting through a throw move without getting hit. Unless you waste all of your MP using Session, which isn't an intended way to deal with that move. Next, according to Dean as well from PAX East, the 2.5 English demo for PS4 also still has the Xemnas 1 crash, triggered if you go limit form in the fight and then have to do the building RC, which means they also did not fix that. So if you're an English player picking up this port, don't go limit form on Xemnas 1. It's sad a basic game mechanic can crash that fight, but they did not care to fix it yet, and we are at a loss of how it only happens on the English port, because on Japanese it does not exist. The experiment crash still exists as well, but that was in all versions of KH2, so it's not surprising that it's not fixed. But that leads me to probably the number one problem casual players will run into if not fixed or patched, and that is save crashing. For the first time in the entire series, there is now a crash that exists when you try to simply save your game. The best part is it doesn't even save the game. On the plus side, at least no one has corrupted a save yet. But just the thought of your game crashing while saving is terrifying. This needs to be fixed. Someone lost an hour of progress from it, as well as myself losing a good 20 minutes from one crash, although the second crash I got was better since now my only option is to save spam all the time to prevent losing progress randomly. I decided to do a test of saving every about 10 minutes of gameplay mostly, and I got 5 hours into the gameplay before crashing. So now that I've discussed the pros and cons, what are the solutions to these problems? Well, patching is now a thing, but some fans ignorantly cling to the mindset of, oh, don't worry, they'll just be patched eventually, why worry? When that isn't even safe at all to assume. They have patched 0.2, as well as some of their other series, but take note that nothing was fixed in this port other than load times, which they likely cannot even take credit for. So to assume they're already patching it is ignorant. However, should they choose to patch it, there is a problem that is concerning. Unlike 0.2, which is a new game where the code is fresh, this is a 10-year-old game where the code may not be easy for them to change now. So asking for them to fix the entire physics, for example, may not be feasible. Instead, there is a simple fix to the physics problems. All we have to do is ask for a 30 FPS toggle option. It would be super easy for them to patch this in, I'd imagine. They did something similar with Final Fantasy XV with its light and high mode, so doing that here would fix most issues. For me personally, I don't mind playing a 10 year old game in 30 FPS if it's more stable in 30 FPS. DDD's port was perfectly done in 60 FPS, likely due to nothing really being tied to frame rate. However, for KH1 and KH2, there are physics and such tied to frame rate, so upping it to 60 FPS without recoding causes problems. 60 FPS for an old game should not be a necessity just to make it look pretty at the cost of stability. So if they were to add in a 30 FPS option to fix the broken physics mechanics, and perhaps finally fix Final Xemnas Reaction Command, and of course save crashing or crashing in general best they can, then we may just have a strong port. Just remember that these things need to be spoken up about. 0.2 and Final Fantasy X PS4 both had patches after people pointed out problems, so now that patching's a thing, perhaps we can try to finally be heard. Keeping quiet about it will continue to make Square think nothing needs to be fixed, because many fans will buy the game regardless. If you crash your game, tweet at them, message their customer service, send in a PS4 crash report, do whatever you can to get these problems pointed out to them. Anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Here's to hoping Square listens this time for those of us who actually care about having properly functional KH game ports.